So yeah, just uh, just thought I'd do a nice little vlog. Mine and Phil's uh, day out. Just kind of uh, strolling around Brighton. We're going to go see the uh, uh, Brighton Museum and Art Gallery. Um, and uh, yeah, probably going to go for lunch in a bit. It's really nice weather today, actually. It's like such nice weather in here in the pavilion. Oh. Yeah. Hey. Size of eagles around here. Yeah. There go. Yeah, with the oh. amount of French fries that people yeah. feed them. But yeah, if anyone's ever at a cat adoption shelter and one of the cats looks like this, uh, there's probably something wrong with it. Yeah. It's the spawn of Satan. It looks like some kind of Egyptian idol that a pharaoh would use to hypnotize his subjects. It looks like something that was designed by a, equally by a pharaoh and like Liberace. It's just so gaudy. Yeah. Let's face it, if, if you've got a dining table like this, yeah. you probably have a, quite a few pennies to spare, because this is, I imagine even, by the, in, even at the time when this was designed, it would have been a, pr a pretty penny, so to speak, because it was designed uh, back in 1935, which is actually a lot more recent than I thought it would have been. Yeah, no, no you can tell it's because it's really thick, it has this sort of Art Deco style going with lots of aluminium. Aluminium was kind of the... Uh, new exciting hot metal that they had at the time so uh, you get lots and lots of uh, things with aluminium designs built into them nice yeah. it's just so like archetypal to like the aesthetic of the era as well because it's just yeah. clearly built to last it's mm. clearly built to be like solid durable yeah um even though there's like elements of uh, classical architecture mixed in with it, so it's a fascinating oh. design when you compare it to like the standard like artistic uh, middle class like say table of today. Mm, it's very much a sort of futurism monument in a way. Futurism being the sort of aesthetic employed in the nineteen thirties, most notably by the Nazis and the Soviet Union, which is why it's largely fallen out of favour. But uh, basically, large, um, large, thick slabs of material that have. Uh, considerable presence combined with some classical features and lots of modern metallic features as well. Yeah. It's the style of the... Uh... I mean, it's, it's, it's all good and well though to like appreciate this uh, table for its, um, you know, for its architectural sort of qualities, but it's a bit hard to concentrate on it when you've got this giant uh, baseball <laughs> glove right behind it. Now, as far as sofas go, it's actually not that bad. Yeah, that's what I... It would be really fun to slide off if you're a child. Yeah, it would be something really good to, I guess, quite appropriately watch a sports game or something. It just yeah. looks like quite a good thing to lounge on. Mm. So tell me, just like really quickly though, Phil, what's your take on uh, Salvador Dali? Um, mm. I mean, is, I mean, he's obviously like a man of real intent and sort of integrity as well as artistic intention. But um, I, I find sometimes like people just say like, uh, you know, his even but for the standards of the time, his painting was a bit far out there. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not a huge fan of his work. I'm not a great fan of uh, surrealists generally. Yeah. But uh, I prefer um, other things from the era, the more sort of impressionist artwork. I, t I, t earlier. I, t I tell you what, I do always appreciate um, uh, Picasso. Oh, okay, no. I, sorry? Nothing. Anyway, I I do actually really appreciate um like for example Picasso's interpretation of like the Spanish Civil War through oh, indeed. very like interpretist sort of like yeah. kind of surreal but like still straddling the lines of believability sort of representation mm. of that conflict. Yeah, but from the time period, I prefer people like uh, Edvard Hungerwasser. Yeah, because notable Viennese artist famous for his. Uh, large, uh, colourful mosaic designs that employ bright primary colours in an incongruous pattern. Yeah, oh, he's, de he's definitely, um, again, it's kind, of an art, it's kind of a period of art that's not for everyone, but it's definitely got a lot of meaning to it, so it's definitely worth researching. This is, this is very sort of like, oh, not to sound really rude, but this is a very like proto-quality street sort of d uh, design, like what they used to have on quality street tins back in the 30s. Well, if you'll look at the date, uh, you'll see that it's considerably earlier than the things that we were looking at previously. Uh, well, and then the style is sort of reminiscent of money, with uh, the small, fine brush strokes and bright pastel colours. Yeah. I mean, this is basically... Um, 
This is pretty much like, uh, if you go down to the Brighton seafront near the big roundabout, um, and then you see the pier, if you look to your right on the seafront, you'll of course see the old remains of the old pier. Indeed, yes. And so that's what this, uh, this is a painting of basically. Mm. Um, so basically if people were to like walk about like two, three hundred uh, meters to the right down the seafront from where the current modern pier is, you'd see the remains of that. And um, it's it, like, of course, as we can see here, it was very colorful, very sort of like expansive, possibly even more so than the modern pier. But um, now it stands as... There's a larger building in the center. Yeah, but now... Of the, yeah, when I first arrived in Brighton, you could still see the girders of the building on top. Now, as a result of some storms that happened in uh, 2017, I think it was, much of that has disappeared. So someday it will all be gone. I mean, even before then, it still stood as quite like a stark, just dark reminder seeing like the black sort of yeah. like bones of it just mm. after the great fire that basically gutted the whole thing. I've always admired Pablo Picasso for like his, again, uh, kind of similar to Dali, uh, his, you know, artistic intent and what he kind of meant behind his art and his integrity mm. towards his artistic sort of pride and, you know, message. But it's just really strange because he, he just basically, he really looks like a slightly, um, a slightly more rotund version of my maternal grandfather. <laughs> I mean, all of the stuff in here is like really well preserved. This is basically, for, obviously for anyone who uh, is watching this video, is the uh, Egyptian history exhibit here in the uh, museum. Um, definitely, this is part of the museum, I'd say I'd probably recommend this part the most because yes, I think, my um, like, I, I really like, uh, what, what era of history would you call uh, the Egyptian Empire? Uh, the Egyptian Empire I would call uh, the Bronze Age. Yeah, so if, I mean, if anyone is interested in bronze to sort of like um, Iron Age sort of history, this is definitely like the one for you because yeah, so uh, it just shows how long the Egyptian Empire lasts because as you can see we have some uh, bronze mirrors which yeah. really shine back in the day so they had bronze but they started out using stone tools, stone weapons, stone tipped arrows and spears and crocodile skin armour is one of the weirdest things that you'll see in early Egyptian tombs before they moved on to uh, sort of lamellar armour and bronze weapons I mean, it's which is became a superpower. Especially when you consider that, as as we are now in the year 2019, the uh, you know the Egyptian civilization has essentially been around for like anywhere between s seven to fifteen thousand years, and their empire essentially lasted for about five thousand years as well. Yeah. It was just like it's like it was something that even put the mighty Byzantine Empire to shame. Yes. Uh, Proto modern art part of the museum and um, we yeah. just we just went through the um uh the trans um exhibit which was very very interesting it's yeah, quite, it a lot of, quite a lot of shocking but also very interesting history here we are in the uh, art department yeah it's this is called open option by jules Litsky, and it's from 1971 so yeah, we're now in the uh, modern art bit, and uh, uh, as Phil pointed out just before I started recording, um, this is basically just like when someone forgets to put in a painting. Yeah. I mean, like th these ones again. I think it's kind of a little bit simple for my liking, but it's still a little bit. Yeah, but at least they put some effort into making. I mean, again, not all the stuff in here I like, but at least, at least there's like some character to it. Even that, like. Even that really skewed one of the cats is like got yeah. more character to it. Even though that one looks like its just face has been smushed one way. So here we have a painting of uh, Neville Wallace, who was a uh, art critic during the uh, 50s and 60s. Um, and his uh, painter friend, uh, John uh, Minton, uh, did a painting of him. And here's the chair, actually, that um, Neville Wallace was sitting in when this painting was painted. And uh, we've got Phil sitting in the critic's chair. What's your thoughts? Performance piece, sorry. Um, no, my uh, thoughts on this... It's always interesting, and I do actually like it when uh, artists 
sort of paint their immediate surroundings rather than necessarily um, purely outside. Mm. I always find it interesting when artists paint pictures of episodes from their own life. Yeah. Because it gives you such a little window into the world in which they inhabit. So yeah, now we've, uh, we, we're looking at Boy with a Cat, which is one of those sort of classic sort of paintings that's very, it's just, is what it is. It's literally just, um, you know, what it says on the tin, which is kind of like a style of painting that I think is kind of dead now. But like, it's very, it's very interesting in terms of just its sort of simplicity, except when you zoom in and you see this doped out off its nut cat. <laughs> who, like Phil said, has seen some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like that time in that, um, in that vlog I once did where we went to the Brighton Toy Model and um, Museum yes. just under the train station, and we saw that uh, model of that pug that looked... Oh, gosh, yes, the, the, the weird piece. orange one that just looked like something out of um, a, a Cronenbergian body horror. Yeah, in, if we're being totally fair... You look at some of the things that you get in a toy shop these days, it's probably not that much better. Yeah, that's probably... Okay. Yeah, yeah, you got to. Very good. Cool.